Hi there. My name is Marius, and uh, about a year ago, I got a request if I wanted to make a video testing this. This is the Macro Racer 2. It got wireless headphones, and it has a regular jack that you can put in any kind of headset. It got a volume switch, which is awesome for me because I have a bad hearing. Um, I can turn this volume up so loud that it could wake your neighbor. Um, it also has a vibrating handle and uh, yeah, it's a pretty nice detector. Over the last year I've gotten to know this detector and I've got some really nice finding finds with it. Uh, found a lot of good stuff. It's really good at coins, uh, it's really good at relics. Uh, it has uh, yeah, it has four five modes. It has uh, all metal, a two-tone, a three-tone, a beach and a deep mode. Um, the beach mode is really good. It doesn't uh, make the detector freak out at all when you're getting close to the salt water. And um, yeah, really nice. I usually use the three tone um, setting or the three tone mode because then you could adjust your own uh, tone break. So for example, I put my um, iron discrimination really low. That way I can get um, or it's basically just like 10 on the setting from 0 to 100 and zero, I have 15 on the iron discrimination but then I have the tone break set pretty low at about 20 so I can hear everything that's iron I can hear it with a deep tone and then I have a middle tone for every regular target and a high tone for coins so the high tone is breaking about 56 with me and I think that is uh, really awesome that you can choose your own tone break. Um, the two-tone mode will go a little bit deeper and it's also yeah, a really good mode. But usually I think the three-tone is more than deep enough. And uh, yeah, so that's what I usually use. Uh, the deep mode, um, I, I haven't really used that mode that much because um, usually I'm hunting for coins and small relics and I really don't need to go that deep so usually I just use the three tone mode and uh, with just a little bit iron discrimination and I think it's awesome and this is the settings that I usually use I usually just do the mode three tone gain I do about 80 sometimes higher sometimes lower if you're in a place where there's a lot of trash <clears throat> you should put this a little bit lower but here there's not much trash and i can probably even get it a little bit higher like 85. Um, then you have the id filter i usually put it about 10 15 something like that but then i have the notch filter uh, that i don't use but i use this um, iron audio I put this on max the tone break is 25 to change it I just press the switch right here then you can see it jumps from the low to the high tone break this is only an option in the three tone mode in the two tone you will only be able to set one of the tone breaks but a really 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 nice feature um, also you have the um, audio tone I haven't messed with that too much uh, vibration is awesome I usually put on a little bit vibration just that I could feel in the handle if I'm not paying attention to the screen it's nice to feel a target and also backlight is really nice if you if it's a little bit dark outside or if the Sun is going down then it's nice to have the backlight um, also you have a front light a little LED on the front of the uh, control box right there that will light up all the way down to the coil awesome feature as well um, another awesome feature is the possibility to save you put it down on save and then you give it a little push on the on the switch right here uh, the switch right here also doubles as a uh, yeah, you can choose modes and stuff with it. You can save with it, but it's also the pinpointer. So if I pull this up like this, I have a pinpointing mode. And if I wanna do a ground balance, I pull this in the other direction, like this, while I pump it up and down, like that. 
and then it's ground balanced. Um, another feature that I like is that it has the battery pack back here, so it's not that heavy in the front. Really nice feature. But why don't I show you what I've been finding with this awesome detector? Look at this. Yeah. Yes. New target. Oh. Oh, nice. What did you find? I'm guessing it's a lead button or something. It's awesome. Pretty old, I'm guessing. Oh, nice, there's a number on it. But don't know if the camera can see, but there's a number four. Maybe a little bit too dark. There, maybe. There's a number four on top. Yeah. Don't know if you could see it, but. Huh. Nice. I have no clue what it is, but it's, it's cool. Sure is. Yay! <laughs> Another nice find with the Mokro Racer 2. Just uh, showed you guys what Maya found. And right underneath our feet, I found this. The smallest little buckle. Someone's been losing a lot of pants on these fields. <laughs> awesome. Just dug a really good signal. Uh, 67, 68. It was just the same signal before I took out the plug. So uh, let's hope this is something good. Thought I could do a live dig. Huh? Whoa! Whoa! This could be really old. Whoa, so nice. That's something cool. Don't find these every day. This might actually be, uh, this might be as old as I have to deliver it. He might have to give this away to the Norwegian museums. I don't know, but it looks fairly old. Awesome find though. Yeah, best find so far of the day. Awesome. I was up there, Maya is right there. Then I walked down here and I got a yeah, pretty decent, a little bit jumpy signal between 45 and yeah, 67 or something like that. And I just dug a button and it got some design. I can't make it out exactly what it is, but I'm guessing it's like a clover design or something. And it got shank. Woohoo! Nice little button. A nice find. Maybe I can clean it up a little bit better when I get home and see if. I can make out anything of the design. I think it's a clover or something. And it's a little bit concave. Don't know if you can see it. It's not completely flat. It's like... Yeah. A little bit concave, I think. Still cool. Awesome button. Signal of the day, I think. It looks to be a silver ring. It is. Yeah, 
kjøre før han gjort noe skikkelig regn, men han er helt sikkert stempel på en såpass. Ja da. Vi har stamps. Ja. It's uh, four stamps minimum. That's meaning that it's uh, early in 1800, I'm guessing. And also Norwegian made, possibly. We can find out a lot no, of info. Normally it's Bergen. Men dette finner ut. Yeah. Nice. What's the thing though? Is it silver plated or it looks... No, it's silver. It's normally there is a stamp saying the silver gehalt. Yeah. Awesome. My first good signal of the day. Woohoo! Nice. Dug this. Right here. Uh, the silver ring I found earlier was probably down there somewhere, I guess, around there. And I walked up here and pulled my second ring of the day. It's a copper ring, but fairly old and uh, yeah, pretty decent condition. They're usually not this good when they come out of the ground in Norway. Cool find. Woo! -hoo. Here's the coin that I found today. Beautiful little silver coin. There you go. So, Tiura. It's uh, from 1892. And this is the Norwegian uh, lion, the shield of Norway. It was a pretty little coin. In conclusion, I love this detector and I think most people will. I can recommend this to anyone looking for relics or coins. It's easy to use, it's easy to set up, it got a really good balance so you don't get that quickly tired in your arm. Um, I can detect with this for two, three, four hours, no problem. And um, yeah, don't have to worry about a cord going to the detector. Um, I came from an AT Pro going into this. And the AT Pro is a lot more back heavy because, uh, or front heavy I mean, because it has everything in the front piece here. Uh, here you only got the screen, the battery pack is behind your arm here. So the balance feels a lot better. Um, I can detect for a long time and even when it gets dark I have a light, I have vibration, I have a uh, lit display. It's just a pretty good all-around detector. So if you're looking for a detector that feels high-end without having to pay a lot of money, the Macro Racer 2 is probably a good choice. I love it.